Let us pray. Father, we ask as we open up the Scripture to hear your voice speaking to us through the written word. We pray that you would help us to understand clearly what you would have us understand and to put in our practice. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I would like to ask you to turn with me to Genesis 1. So turn your Bible with me to Genesis 1. And tonight we are going to start out just reading. Just reading. There is, I have learned that there is power in just reading the Word. The Holy Spirit is able to speak and we are able to hear his voice if we're listening. So let's begin at verse 1 and read with me. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Is there anything confusing there? No. But what if I didn't want to believe that? Could I find reasons not to believe? Yes, because we are told that God will not remove the possibility of doubt from us. If we want to doubt, we will find reason not to follow what God says. And as you're going to see that this evening, this is so cut and dry, you would wonder how a person could go to school and study and go all the way up to a terminal degree, do you know what they call a terminal degree? PhD. No. A PhD, right? Because you don't, go, you don't go higher than that. So you go all the way up to a terminal degree and still can't see this. Something is wrong. Look how simple it is. Let's read verse 2. And the earth was what? Was without form and void. So what is that saying? Just briefly, it didn't say there was no earth. So when you talk about the creation and, and you know, people will tell you about rocks, right? And you may feel, oh, I can't believe the rock is that old because then if I believe, then I don't believe in creation story. Not necessarily so. <laughs> because as this is explaining, when God made this earth, a lot they were there already, yes. right? So there's a possibility that the rocks could have been there and it was years old. So when the Lord created the heaven and the earth, it says that the earth was without form. It's like you going into the house and you put the furniture all over the place, right? And uh, void and darkness was up on the face of the deep. So there was sea, but... It was dark. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, verse 3, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning was what? So we are going to put some nice water here, right here. And so when you look at this, I want you to see this as day number one. So that was the first day. All right, let's read verse six. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the water. Can you envision that? In other words, it's like saying, let there be a sky in the middle of the water. So there's water up there, and there's water down here, and the firmament is, it's hard for us to imagine it. So he said, 
and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning was now the second day. All right, I am going to ask you a question, and be honest, be honest with me. Let me see the hands of those who are confused thus far. Only about the firmament, me. Well, you're only confused about what the firmament, but when we talk about the firmament, we're talking about what we call the atmosphere. Right. So there's no confusion, right? It's clear. Clear what the Bible is saying here. So let's go on to verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. So you see what he's doing now? He's taking the water. He's going to put it in one place. And let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of of the waters called he seas. So if someone asks you what is the sea or how it came about, you, you, you shouldn't be confused, right? Because the greatest scientist, the one who created it, he's telling you how it's done. Don't listen to these guys that write these big books. You know, they think they're smarter than God. They're not. God is telling you how we have a sea. And God, say, and God saw that it was good. Verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the third day. So let's get a little more water here. Good. Oh, you just want to take a drink, right? All right. Okay, so let's go to verse 14. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now, there is something here to remember. January 1. Or 
Yes, January 1. But what the world say, it is December 31 at 12 o'clock. When you hear the world celebrating New Year's Day, laugh at their folly. Because the Bible is clear. What night is tonight? Wednesday. This is Wednesday night. You, you know, it is it is very interesting how we can tell a lie so often that it end up looking like true. But notice the scripture is clear. The evening comes before the morning. The evening and then the morning is the fourth day. Where are we? Verse 20? Yes. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath, that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every wing fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So here we are at day number five. Suppose I did this to you and hide it and then come back and ask you which of these was the second day. The possibility is you wouldn't know, right? You'd be guessing because what? They all look the same. Good. All right, verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and, ev and over everything, living thing that moveth upon the earth. 
And so, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. Uh, and I can't help but, seeing we're not going to be studying that, I can't help but telling you this. Now, notice here, this is creation story. And right there, God was given to man his medicine and his food. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you talk about that, someone may say, but, but look, but the Bible say you can eat this. This one is clean and that one is clean. Well, that is a, a poor study of the Bible. And there's a lot of poor study, studying of the Bible that go along. What they fail to understand is that that was given on plan B. What we're reading here, it was what? Plan A. Amen. But when man failed God, and you remember the flood? And what happened at the flood? The vegetation was destroyed. And God gave man the go ahead. Oh, didn't see you. Good to see you. <laughs> Waiting for you. And there you were. Yes, and God said to man, you can eat this animal, you can eat that as long as it's clean. But what we don't realize is that God was doing something that some of us don't know about. Do you know what he was doing? Yes. Do you know many people don't know that? When God gave man the go-ahead to eat meat, it was to shorten, shorten his life. You remember? Man was able to live what? Methuselah, 969 years. Can you imagine? Can you imagine just getting married after you're 400 years old? <laughs> you're young. Yeah, that was God's desire for man. But when man sinned, God said what? You will live to be 70 and by reason of strength. And so God gave man meat because he knew that meat would shorten man's life. So, when we're quoting that in the Bible, we should quote it intelligently, that we understand why that's happening. All right, so just wanted to throw that in so you understand what's happening. So, did we read verse 30 already? All right, let's read verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for what? Meat. And it was so. So it was not God's will. I, I stop. I don't enjoy nature the way I used to. You know, younger, I enjoyed it more. Now, I don't enjoy it very much. Much And I was reading something from the pen of inspiration, and I understand why I don't enjoy it anymore. And I said, praise the Lord. It says the closer we get to Jesus, it's the more sensitive we are about God's creature. So I can't watch to see the lion catch the, and tear them to pieces. It can't take it anymore. And when you think that as a boy growing up, you, you know, we had a, a, we would make our catapult. And it was exciting to go around. Yeah, I see you smiling, you know, and go around and you hear the birds in the tree. And, oh, that's what you want. And you put your stone in and, and then you see the bird falling. 
so... And I remember sometimes in the evening you, you would see some of the lads, you know, they're, they're going home with a string of birds. Right? But the more you get to know Jesus, you can't do that anymore. <clears throat> so God gave even the animals. He gave them herb to eat because he wanted them to be healthy also. Verse 31, and God saw that every, he saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So here we are, day number six. Good. All right, so now, we are going to turn to chapter 2 of the book of Genesis. Chapter 2, verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. So here we are on another day called the seventh day. Brand new day called the seventh day. So I want you to imagine God now saying to us, remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Now, we could figure that out, right? Because we would say, well, then this is the seventh day. But what again if I made a trick on you, put a trick on you, and you don't know where that, and, and then I ask you, where is the seventh day? Where would you find it? The same place? Ha, ha, ha. It's right here. So you see, you would be confused, right? You wouldn't know which day. It is. But here we have still, we have seven days that God created. And so, it continues, verse 2, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. So wherever the seventh day is here, if we weren't sure it's this one, he rested on that day. Now, if this is the first day, did, did he rest on this day? No. All right. So let's, let's assume that we, we know that this is seventh. the seventh. Right. So he didn't rest here. What about here? No. Here? No. Here? No. Here? No. All right. And what about this one? So the Bible says wherever the seventh day is there, the Bible says not... The preachers say, not the Farmville Seventh-day Adventist Church say that. The Bible say that God, what? Rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And verse 3 goes on to say something very interesting. And God bless. bless the seventh day. Now, let, let, let me ask you. What if I say, yeah, I know the Bible say he blessed the seventh day, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call the first day the seventh day. Mm -hmm. Would that be honest? No. Okay, wouldn't be honest. And God wouldn't appreciate that. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of Cain. He was a farmer. His brother, the shepherd. God said, I want you to bring me a lamb. His brother, 
obeyed. And Cain, I, I imagine, argued, well, you know, I may have a few sheep, but really, that's not my trade. And I am not going to give up a lamb. So you know what I'll do? I will give God my biggest pumpkin. My best pumpkin. And so he gave God fruit. And what did God do? He rejected it. And can you imagine? Because of that, it caused the first murder. Right. So the Bible did not say God blessed one of the days. Then if he said he blessed one of the days, then we could take any day, right? And say, and it didn't say he blessed the first day. It says he blessed the second day. What? Seven. The seventh day. No. What would you say is different now? Are all the days the same anymore? No. Whoa, come on, you need glasses. No. Is they're not? No. Good. I have, a, I have a feeling even a three-year-old But like I told you, there are people with PhD, and they're still, they still can't see this. But the Bible says that God blessed the what? The seventh day. And he, he, he wasn't even satisfied. He said, I'm not just going to bless it, but I'm going to sanctify it. Eh? Oh, you like that? I'm not giving you any. <laughs> so the Bible said that God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it. Why? Because that in it he had rested from all his work which he had made. So as you can see that though you have seven days all created by God, but they're not all the Lord's day. But the world would let you believe. And I showed you that earlier on. And, and I'm going to show you again between tonight and tomorrow. But the world would have you believe. In fact, there are some people, they worship on Friday. Yeah. Uh, Friday? Friday? Yeah, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and some people, they worship on what? Sunday. Sunday. All of that is not in Scripture. Why would we want to do something that is not in Scripture? I, maybe you can explain. I, I don't understand it. Because I, have, yes, it's because I have said this, and you have heard me. You have heard me on this. The day I don't... I change my mind from following what God says... I will just leave and go out and have fun in the world and knowing that I'm going to be lost anyhow, so at least I enjoy the world. But I'm not going to pretend, stay in the church, pretend, doing my own thing, knowing what God says, but he should accept that. Some people actually tell you, it doesn't matter what day, as long as you choose it. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. How do you arrive at that? Why would you do that? And you know what? What is so interesting is those same people who say that, if they give instructions to you, if you're working for them, and they gave you instruction, and you did the opposite, oh, they would fire you so fast. But they don't respect what God has to say. 
Let's see if... All right. The Sabbath day, as that one is called, different, not the same. Of all the days, it is different. But we, we must remember that it is what? A day of joy and delight. The Sabbath is not a boring day. The Sabbath is when you hang out with God. So it's a joyous day. Who made the Sabbath? Now, no one, even if they're going to put you on the cross, you're going to hold on to that, right? Because you have read that in the scripture, that God is the one who made the Sabbath. And we have that in the New Testament, too. You know, some people think, oh, that's Old Testament thing. No, no, it's not just. Don't, 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 don't let people play those games with your mind. They're just trying to get away from obeying God. The Bible says in Mark 2, verse 28, Therefore, the Son of Man is what? Lord of the Sabbath day. The Son of Man is Lord, Creator, Christos of the Sabbath day. Now, reading that text, just reading that text, evaluating that text, which would you say is the Lord's day? Sabbath. Why would you say the Sabbath? Lord of the Sabbath. So that would be what? The Lord's day. But you remember what we talk about? That everything that God has, Satan, he has a counterfeit. So I have gone to visit it, Sunday church, and I have sat there on Sunday morning, and I hear the people singing joyfully, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. And that's true. Only that's not all they mean. They're saying that this is the day that God intended for us to worship. And that is not true. But do we worship every day? Yes. Do, do we worship on Sunday? Yes. And on Tuesday? Yes. Right. Every day. But it's not a day of rest. No. Because on Tuesday, I get up and I make my breakfast. You know, I can cook my oats, right? I don't do that on this day. On this day is called what? Preparation, preparation day. day. The day, the Bible calls it what? The preparation day, the day before the Sabbath. So, I don't do any cooking here. In fact, I take my shower here. Yeah. I thank God for my grandparents, you know. I just thank God for my grandparents. That's how I was brought up. You know, we took our shower on Friday evening and we were ready for the Sabbath. All the pudding. Oh, Elder Gibson, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to confess a little. On Sabbath, I would be in church. And the preacher is preaching. And you know what my mind is on? The pudding. Because my grandmother, I mean, Sabbath was special for us. The food was special. And so on Friday, my grandmother, you know, I go out and I get the wood. And my grandmother would burn the wood and make the coal. And then we have a thing that you call the Dutch pot. And so as she mixed up the nice cornmeal pudding and she put it in and then she had some coal at the bottom and then she put some coal on the lid. And whoa, those, those of them, they were good. I mean, nothing to turn down, but they know how to put the right heat. And so I'm sitting in church at times and I'm thinking about the pudding. <laughs> Sabbath was special. 
It was special. So Jesus is what? Lord of the Sabbath day. Why does the text use the words also? Why does it say, Lord also of the Sabbath day? John 1, 2 to 3. The same was in the beginning with God. That's Jesus. All things were made by him. So the writer used the word also because it was not just the Sabbath that Jesus created. But everything that was created was created by who? Jesus. Jesus. God created the earth through his Son. So all things were made by him. And without Jesus was not anything made that was made made. For whom was the Sabbath made? Amen. Well, let's look at that. Mark 2, verse 27. And he said unto them, that's Jesus, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Man, the Sabbath, which is more important? Yeah. Right. But the Sabbath is important. Why? Because it was made for man. Now, let me tell you what some of the geniuses out there will tell you. They will say, you see, yes, what that text is talking about is the Jews. The Sabbath was made for the Jews. But you are much more, you know, smarter than that. You know, it said nothing about Jews. It says man. Right? Furthermore, the Sabbath was made for man long before there was a Jew. That hurt. Because I was really hanging my hat on that, that I would get away with that. It was made for the Jews. Well, the problem, there was no Jews around. No Jews. Long before what? The kingdom of Judah. Right? That's where you get the Jews from. Yes. The Sabbath was made long before that. Long before the Israelites. Yes. The Sabbath was made at creation for Adam and Eve and everyone that would follow, man. And as you know, that he didn't have to say for men and women. Because when the Bible uses the word man, it's generic. Right? It takes in both male and female. So the Sabbath was created for us. For humans. So don't let anybody play tricks with your mind. I think they have a term now that they're using that's called what? Gaslighting? Is, is, is that what they call it? Oh, you, oh, you, you, you haven't heard that? Yeah, that. Uh, well, no, it's, it's a little different. All right? Okay. So let's go a little further. What is the Sabbath day called in Scripture? What is the Sabbath day called in Scripture? Revelation 1, 10 to 11. It was in, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. So here the Bible says, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now, how would I know which day that is? Because Jesus said, said that, that he's Lord. Lord. By going back to the scripture. So if I, if I am making my moves based on scripture, 
Wouldn't you say I'm, sa I'm on safe ground? Yeah. Yes. So I, would, I can conclude easily that John had, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, on the Sabbath, he received revelation from the Lord. Every day is a day made by God. So what is the scripture talking about when it uses the term the Lord's day? Exodus 20, 8 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Does that cause you to pause? The only commandment that God say remember, that's the one the world wants to forget. So by saying remember, God knew that was going to happen. And he even gave us a warning there. He said, remember, somebody's going to tell you. Did we read that somebody would tell us otherwise? Yes. Daniel 7, 25. So God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you can what? You can labor. All of these days you can labor. You can go to work and do all your work. But the seventh day is the special day, is the Sabbath of what? Of the Lord thy God. In it, in that day, thou shalt do no work. Thou, nor thy son, nor that, what? Well, we don't have that one here, but it's in your Bible. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And if you read it in your Bible, it will tell you that your, your, your servants and whoever is in your home, right? Now, sometimes some of us want to believe we keep the, we keep the Sabbath, but many of us don't. And again, I, I thank the Lord for the home that I was brought up in. I remember when my father, he came from the big city and he came to stay with us. I grew up with my grandparents. And uh, my grandfather told my father, still remember it, if you are here on Sabbath, you're going to keep the Sabbath. Now understand, my father is a man without many children. My grandfather said, if you're going to stay here, you're going to observe the Sabbath. Else, you can stay out, and when the Sabbath is finished, then you can come. And guess what my father did? Exactly that. Stayed up. And so on Saturday night when the sun set, you would see my father coming home. But my grandfather was serious. On Friday evening, when the sun set, no pot on the fire. You see, this is not something that, that we read. And, and, and what is so hypocritical is that we, 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 we want to say to the world that we keep the Sabbath, right? And we like to study with them about the Sabbath. But do we keep the Sabbath day holy? What's going on in your home? Who is in another room with TV going, watching the ball game? Whose home it is? See, that's your responsibility. And, and it's in the text. It says, no one. Now, we, we grew up as sugarcane farmer. My grandfather was a sugarcane farmer. And what do you do when it's time to reap the sugarcane? The farmers, they have donkeys. Because you have to transport the sugarcane to a place where the trucks can come and get it. So I borrow your donkey when it's my time, 
and I borrow his donkey and his, and so, and you may come also and help, and so you drive your own donkey, and we transport the cane. When it's your time, then you borrow mine, and I come and help you too, and that's how it, it went. And all the farmers there, they weren't Seventh-day Adventists, but they knew something about my grandfather. You are not going to get his jack. It, it was what we call a jack, right? You're not going to get his on the Sabbath. They knew that. There was no contention about that. And that's why the Lord said, no one, no one that is in your well, it used another word. No one that is in your gates. No one that is in your gates. That's your responsibility. Dealing with the same question on the Lord's day, what did Isaiah the prophet prophesy that God's end time people would do? What did he say? Oh, you remember, you remember that text. What has happened to the Sabbath, both within and out? It has been breached, right? Yes. We have not kept the Sabbath. We do all kind of things. We, we, um, and, then we, and then we come to the sanctuary, and we act like we kept the, the Sabbath. But some of you were studying, you know that Two of the most sacred part that you better watch carefully are what? The edges. the edges, the beginning of the Sabbath and the ending of the Sabbath. So that when the Sabbath ends and you ask the Lord for a blessing. blessing. Because it is said that on Sabbath, the Lord, he hands out the blessing. He takes pleasure in giving a Sabbath day's blessing. Thus, we must, we must watch the edges of the Sabbath, because it's not your day. You, you know, uh, there's a man on family radio, and I would listen, and uh, he would say, this is our day. And I said, you are right. That's your day. But you know, I worship on the Lord's day, because I don't have a day for myself. So he's right. That's his day. But the Sabbath has been breached because man has done what he wants to do. And in his hubris way, he wants God to accept what he gives, like Cain. Right. So what did Isaiah say? And they that shall be of thee. Thee who? God. Right. So those who belong to God shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of what? Many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. The rebuilding of God's holy day that has been trampled. Continuing on the same. Same. If thou take away. This is a promise that God is making. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. Notice how he put it. Your foot. So on Sabbath when you go do your own thing. You're walking. He sees it as what? Trampling on his holy day. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing what? Your thing, your pleasure. On what? My holy day. And call the Sabbath a delight. Holy of the Lord. Honorable. And shalt what? Honor him. You honor God by what? Obeying. Jesus said, if you love me, don't, don't tell me that you love me. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's the test. Not what I say. What I do. Nor speak in thy what? Own words. I have learned on Sabbath 
I don't like to be around certain people, Elder Gibson, because I watch what I say. I don't talk about cars. I don't talk about work. I try to reflect on my Creator. Amen. That's Sabbath keeping. Yes. I remember as a little boy growing up, our family in the big city, they knew, they knew not to come and visit. Even my grandparents' daughter, don't come on Sabbath. They always come on Sunday because they know that coming down on Sabbath, you know, after not seeing you for a long time, there's going to be the temptation to talk about what? All kind of stuff. Yeah. So stay away. Because this is God's day. Amen. That's how personal you have to take it. Yes. Let your family know. Yeah. If you're going to come around on Sabbath, just respect that I don't do certain things. And they will respect you. Then the Lord says what? Thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord. And I will what? Oh, watch the promise now. And I will cause thee to rise on the high places of the earth. And do what? And feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. Why? For the mouth of the Lord has spoken this. This is a promise from God. Says if you take your foot off my Sabbath, you're not found in the mall. You're not found at Walmart. You're not found doing your own thing. You are found worshiping me, the Creator. This is the birthday Amen. of the earth. So he asks us to remember is it your desire? Is it your desire to rest and worship when God is resting and worship? Yes. Oh, my answer is yes, 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 yes. Amen. Not when man say, when God say. So when he's resting, I want to be resting too. When did God rest and worship? Genesis 2, 1 and 2, thus the heavens and the earth were and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested the seventh day from all the work that he had done. What about Jesus? What, when did he rest and worship? Luke 4, 16. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as is custom, what is a person's custom? Something they do all the time. Now, can you imagine, remember something I said earlier. Can you imagine walking up to the throne of God and uh, you said to him, Lord, I kept the Sabbath because Jesus did it. Is it your idea about God that he would say, get out of here? No. You followed who? Jesus. Who is, who is what to you? Your righteousness. Ah, your righteousness. The father would say, well done, son. Well done, daughter. So he went into the synagogue. When? On Sunday morning. On the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So if it was good for Jesus, how about you? <laughs> All right. If it was good for Jesus, it's good for me too. Praise the Lord. Of the seven days God made, which of the seven did he set apart from the others? Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it, he rested from all his work, which God created and made. Which of the Ten Commandments did God ask us to remember? Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. 
But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. You see the Lord's day? The Lord thy God. The Ten Commandments, the first for first. The Ten Commandments is the character of God. Amen. So when you hear false shepherds telling you that the commandments were abolished at the cross, it is not true. Because what they're saying to you is that God's character was done away with at the cross. Makes no sense. The first ten gives honor to who? To God. So the first ten is your vertical, right? Your worship, the first four, I'm sorry. Your worship to God. And the last six is what? Horizontal, our relationship with each other. You break any of those, and you have broken relationships. And Jesus said, you have broken all. Yes. Which of the seven days did God ask to us to remember? It was the Sabbath day. Why was that warning necessary? Why was it necessary? Because we read something days ago. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change the laws, times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until time, times, and divide up time. So by changing the Sabbath, they accomplish two things, both changing the law and the time, time of worship and the law of God. The Bible told us that this power would do that. And, and I will show you tomorrow night how they boast about it. They boast about it. And you remember something we discovered last night? You remember in Revelation 17, God said, um, the daughters of harlot, right? Say, mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, right? The reason the Bible say um, she's a mother is because she have daughters out there who is following her. And that's exactly what they boast about. They say that these are the churches. They show respect to us by agreeing to change from Saturday that the Bible say to Sunday. So just as the Bible say, they are there daughters. Right. Well, it's, it's wonderful to read the scripture. I mean, I mean it, it, it's, it's just, just powerful. Did that attempt to change God's law occur? And was it successful? Question. Now, this, and if you have your phone, you can take it and you can go and read it. Reverend Stephen Keene. I mean, he has uh, works out there that you can really bring up your, your understanding there. This is not Adventist saying this. This is coming from the horse's mouth. The question is, have you any other way of proving? So the question is being asked to the Catholic Church. Have you any other way of proving that the Church has power to institute, institute festival and precepts? Answer. Had she not such power, she could not have done that, in which all modern religion is. You see, match with what scriptures say? Those are the daughters. Agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Do you see the hubris? They're admitting it. And that's why I told you, they also say 
They will give you $1,000 if you can prove in the Bible that God has changed his rest day from Saturday to Sunday. They said, if you can show us that, they'll give you $1,000 because they know it. what? It's not there. And so they're challenging. And what they're doing here and in other places, there are a lot more, a lot more. What they're doing, they're trying to show that the papacy has power to change God's law. So you can go. You can Google. Go on Amazon. You won't get that copy because that's, that's old. No, that was in 1848. That's 1848 copy of Reverend Reverend Keenan, Stephen Keenan, yes. But on Amazon, and so that's the doctrinal catechism. That's a hardcover, 1848, by Reverend Stephen Keenan. But if you go, if you go right now on Amazon, the book has been revised. And this is what you will see. That's the new one. So you can still get it. Only cost you twenty four dollars. Yeah. It costs you twenty four dollars. Get it. I, actually, twenty eight for the hardcover and the paperback. Twenty four ninety nine. Read it for yourself. It's out there. They're not hiding. They're telling you. James. Cardinal Givens, <laughs> the faith of our fathers, 88th edition, page 89. Listen what he said. But you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. He's right. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. The man is telling you. You see, and so for those who are trying to please man, why? Because they don't want to follow God. Then you remember, you remember what the warning is? Come out of her, my people that you don't receive of her plague and her sin. Because remember, the last issue, you know, you hear people talking about the mark of the beast, but they don't know what it's about. It's about a worship. It's about whose worship? God's seventh day Sabbath or man's first day of the week. That's the last issue. I told you earlier that there is coming. And it's already put together. And that's what you see Pope, um, Pope Francis is trying to introduce in a soft way. He's saying, let's use Sunday as a family day. See, and, and people are buying into it because they don't understand where it's going. That's the soft sell. What Pope Francis wants is the world to worship on Sunday. That's where he's going. Oh, John Locke's. No, this is a course that if you go to Catholic Academy, this is a course in religion at the high school. Some theologians have held that God likewise directly determined the Sunday as the day of worship in the new law. That he himself has explicitly substituted the Sunday for the Sabbath. But this theory is now entirely abandoned. It is now commonly held that God simply gave his church the power to set aside whatever day or days she would deem suitable as holy days. 
The church chose Sunday, the first day of the week, and in the course of time, added other days as holy day. So what they're teaching these young people in the Catholic Academy uh, is that the church has power to set up holy days. And, uh, of course, it has done that. Thus we have the first day of the week that Protestants are bought into. Again, Charles, I mean James, Cardinal Gibbons, Bishop of Baltimore, is Saturday the seventh day according to the Bible and the Ten Commandments? I answer what? Yes. I answer yes. Is Sunday the first day of the week? And did the church change the seventh day Saturday to for Sunday the first day? He said, I answer yes. Did Christ change the day? I answer, I answer no. Faithfully yours, J. Card Gibbons. Horse's mouth. Let's read one more here. The Catholic Miro, official publication of James Cardinal Gibbons, September 23, 1893. The Catholic Church, by virtue of her divine mission, changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. Now, if you can show me in the Bible where God took this and he put it here and take this one and put it over here and say, now this is blessed and sanctified, I will follow you. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. It was David who said, Thy word have I hid in my heart so that I will not sin against you. Lord, help us to understand that you cherish your word and that your word never change as you never change. Give us obedient hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.